Dick Whittington. There once was a boy named Dick Whittington. He didn't have a home or a mother and father to look after him. His only friends were the animals he met as he wandered the countryside. When Dick was hungry, he had to hunt for berries on prickly bushes or scramble up tall trees for apples or pears. Whoa! But that wasn't his only problem. He spent so long roaming the rough country roads, the soles of his boots were worn right through. Every time he stepped on a sharp stone, he winced. My poor feet! I can't go on like this, thought Dick, one cold, wet day, as he sat shivering beneath an oak tree. I need some money, and that means finding a job. I'll start looking first thing tomorrow. The next morning, he met a boatman. Excuse me, sir, cried Dick. I'm looking for work. Can I help you ferry people across the river? Sorry, son, called the boatman. This is a one-man job. Dick spoke to builders and blacksmiths, but the reply was always the same. Sorry, son, no work here. Dick was determined not to give up. So when he saw a farmer working away in his field, Dick rushed up eagerly. I'm after a job, he panted. I could milk your cows, or make hay, or plant vegetables, or... Whoa there, Sonny, said the farmer. He sighed. I'd love to find you work, but I'm a poor man myself. Oh, well, thanks anyway, sniffed Dick sadly. You should try London, said the farmer. They say the streets there are paved with gold. Gold? That's right. His heart racing, Dick thanked the farmer and strode off along the road to London. His head was full of ideas for how he would spend the riches that awaited him. I could buy a whole crate of apples, he thought, licking his lips. Or a hundred crates, maybe. He looked down at his feet. What's more, I can get myself the finest, toughest boots that money can buy. Dick was so excited that the first few miles whizzed by without him even noticing. But as the day wore on, he began to realize just how far he had to travel. By the time the sun was setting, he'd slowed down to a snail's pace. I must keep going, he panted wearily. At dawn, Dick arrived on the outskirts of the city. He was soon caught up in the hustle and bustle of market traders getting ready for business. But his excitement quickly turned to disappointment. The streets weren't paved with gold at all, just dirty old stone. Once again, Dick set about looking for work. He asked a busy baker, a butcher carrying some ducks to sell at his stall in the market, and a cobbler tapping away at a pair of boots. But everywhere, it was the same story. No one could give him a job. By now, it was getting dark. The traders began heading for home, and the streets became deserted. Dick was tired out after his long day trudging through the city. He flopped down on the steps of a grand house and yawned. Barely able to keep his eyes open, he quickly dozed off. Get off my steps, shouted a harsh voice. It was the next morning, and Dick woke to see an angry woman waving a rolling pin at him. Dick rubbed his eyes and scrambled to his feet. He was about to run off when a richly dressed man appeared in the doorway. 
I found this scallywag asleep on the steps, Mr. Fitzwarren, barked the woman. The man looked at Dick. I expect the poor boy needs a decent meal, he said. Bring him inside, Mrs. Grump. While Mrs. Grump waddled off to make breakfast, Mr. Fitzwarren showed Dick around. Dick had never been in such an incredible house. It was filled with strange and wonderful things. I'm a sea trader, explained Mr. Fitzwarren. My ships bring back goods from all around the world. This is just part of my collection. Wow! Over breakfast, Dick told Mr. Fitzwarren his story. The kind man decided to give Dick a job helping out in his kitchen. Dick couldn't believe his luck. He started by peeling a mountain of carrots. It was hard work, but Dick didn't mind. The only bad part was being bossed by Mrs. Grump, who spent the whole morning shouting and moaning at him. I don't know why the master let you into this house, she grumbled. Out of my way! That evening, Mr. Fitzwarren showed Dick up to a room in the attic. Dick had never slept in such comfort. He snuggled down under the blanket and drifted off to sleep. It didn't last long. Scratch! Scratch! Came a noise from beneath his bed. Dick woke to see four fat mice scrabbling on the floorboards. They were joined by four more. Soon, the whole room was filled with mice scurrying across Dick's bed, scampering over his pillow, and climbing in and out of his boots. How can I sleep now? Dick hardly got a wink of sleep. It happened the next night and the night after that. Poor Dick stumbled around exhausted and bleary-eyed. On Friday morning, Mr. Fitzwarren handed Dick his first week's wages. A whole penny? Thanks! Dick had never had any money of his own. He couldn't wait to spend it at the nearby market. There were so many stalls in the marketplace, Dick couldn't decide where to begin. There were people selling fruit and vegetables, clothes, and brightly patterned cloth. Then, a purring caught Dick's attention. He rushed over to the pet stall and scooped up a soft, furry kitten. You're just what I need to deal with those noisy mice, he whispered. He handed over his penny to the stall keeper and carried home his new pet. I'll call you Tom he said. When Dick went to bed that night, the mice sneaked out as usual. But this time, Dick was ready. After them, Tom, he cried. And the little cat leaped into action. Mice scattered in all directions as Tom chased them around the room and back below the floorboards. From then on, no mouse dared show his whiskers in the attic, and Dick slept soundly. A few days later, Mr. Fitzwarren called his staff into his study. One of my ships is setting sail on a trading mission, he announced. If any of you have something to sell, it can go on the ship. Dick knew that Mr. Fitzwarren had made his fortune by buying and selling things. Perhaps if Dick sold something, he could be rich too. The problem was, he only owned one thing, Tom. Dick didn't really want to part with his kitten. He'd grown very fond of him. But maybe someone would pay me two pennies for him, he thought. Reluctantly, Dick decided to offer Tom for sale. The next morning, he loaded his kitten onto a cart, along with the other items bound for Mr. Fitzwarren's ship. 
Goodbye, Tom, he called sadly as the cat trundled away. That night, Dick discovered his mistake. As soon as the mice realized Tom was no longer around, they crawled out of their hiding places. More sleepless nights followed. Dick was tired and slow, and Mrs. Grump started bullying him again. Dick decided he had to go. Early one morning, he crept from the house. As Dick walked away from London, he could hear church bells ringing behind him. To his surprise, they seemed to be calling out a message. Turn again, Whittington, thrice mayor of London. They're telling me to go back, thought Dick in amazement. He didn't understand how bells could talk, but it seemed crazy not to follow their advice. He turned on his heels and rushed back to Mr. Fitzwarren. When he arrived, Mr. Fitzwarren was waiting on the doorstep. Ah, there you are, Dick, he cried with a grin. Good news! The King of Barbary bought your cat to clear the mice from his palace. He sent you these two bags of gold in payment. Gold, thought Dick. I'm glad I listened to those bells. Dick saved the money, and when he grew up, he became a trader like Mr. Fitzwarren. Not only that, but he also became mayor of London three times, just as the bells had said. The end. <laughs>